Good evening from a rather rainy Buckingham Palace on the day King Charles and Queen Camilla were crowned before the eyes of the world. The ceremony at Westminster Abbey was spectacular, a cocktail of ancient and modern at times, touching and sometimes even emotional. Charles was anointed with holy oil and he swore an oath before the Archbishop of Canterbury placed the crown upon his head to a chorus of God save the King. Later, tens of thousands of well-wishers converged on Buckingham Palace to cheer the King and the royal family on the balcony. In just a moment, how the crowd celebrated, what it was like to be part of the service and reaction from across the UK. First, though, here's our correspondent Romilly Weeks on the King's Day of Destiny. <laughs> Looking like a man conscious of the weight of history, the king, the queen beside him in their carriage, leaving the palace so resonant with his mother's reign to take up the mantle of his own. Acknowledging the crowd running the length of the Mall, the procession a patriotic explosion of gold and red and blue. In the Abbey itself, the guest list both smaller and more diverse than the last time Britain put on this particular show. Ordinary people mixing with prime ministers, foreign dignitaries, monarchs and actors who've played them. A hasty arrival for Andrew, now a bit part player in the royal drama. And for Prince Harry, a lonely entrance without his wife missing his son's birthday to witness his father's crowning moment. The queen, who must have doubted she'd ever be in this position, the comfort of her grandchildren behind her. The king, attended by nine-year-old George. For the prince and princess of Wales, a private moment before what's also a rehearsal of their destiny. Your Majesty, as children of the Kingdom of God, we welcome you in the name of the King of Kings. In his name and after his example, I come not to be served but to serve. The humility, a modern addition, but much of this ceremony has echoed through the Abbey, unchanged for centuries. I here present unto you King Charles, your undoubted King. Hand on the Bible, this promise from the King. Will you solemnly promise and swear to govern the peoples of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, your other realms and the territories to any of them belonging or pertaining, according to their respective laws and customs? I solemnly promise so to do. The things which I have here before promised, I will perform and keep. So help me God. In an Anglican ceremony, a Bible reading from Britain's Hindu Prime Minister. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. The music chosen by the king who insisted it should include this gospel choir. If that was not seen at the Queen's coronation, much else was. Charles divested of his robes before the most sacred part of the ceremony. Yeah. 
the anointing behind a screen for a religious king, a moment between him and his God. Sitting in the 700-year-old coronation chair, set on the even more ancient stone of destiny, Charles was presented with the orb last seen on his mother's coffin. Receive this orb, set under the cross, and remember always that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Freighted with symbolism, so much history tiring for some. King of kings and Lord of lords, bless we beseech thee this crown, and so sanctify thy servant Charles, upon whose head this day thou dost place it for a sign of royal majesty. The climax of the ceremony, St Edward's crown placed on the king's head. God save the King! Charles looking as though the responsibility, like the crown, is heavy to bear. While George, serious too. As William paid homage to his father and King, I, William, Prince of Wales, pledge my loyalty to you and faith and truth I will bear unto you as your liege man of life and limb. So help me God. A whispered thank you, William, before the hastily changed part of the service, allowing those at home to join in or not. I now invite those who wish to offer their support to do so. God save Charles! Lord save Charles! For the first time since 1937, a Queen Consort crowned two. For Camilla's children, it must have been extraordinary to witness. On Charles' side, Prince Harry two rows behind William, a reminder of the gulf between the two brothers. The grandchildren faithfully joined in a final rendition of the national anthem. Charlotte sharing a look with her father. In line with the King's wishes, he was greeted by representatives of all faiths before he left the Abbey. Relief, the hard part was over, clear on the King's face. In the gold state coach, the glittering splendour of majesty on full show, with a bank of cameras recording for the world. The largest British military ceremonial since 1953. Prince Louis was clearly relishing the ride with his brother and sister along a route lined with drenched but cheerful crowds. Harry leaving quietly by car, emphasizing the different path he has chosen. A procession of bands, swaying cavalry and wet bearskins, stretching a mile long. 
and joining on horseback, Louis still with plenty to say. Before the carriage returned the king to his birthplace. Three cheers for His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Queen. Hep, hep. <laughs> As the crowds rush down the mall to get a vantage point for this final appearance, the newly crowned king and queen on the balcony. The day signed off in the skies in red, white and blue. Romilly Weeks. ITV News.